Hello. Today I have with me Martin Murphy, Chief Executive of Syncona Investment Management and co-founder of Syncona in 2012. Syncona is included within the Interactive Investor Ace 40 list of rated ethical funds. Hello, Martin. Hi, Lee. Good to see you and thanks for the invitation. Good to see you too. Um, now, Syncona shares have been a pretty decent performer from 2012 to 2016, but then the price really took off at the beginning of uh, 2017. Could you explain the history of the investment trust and some of the reasons why it's done so well? Of course, yeah. So we founded Syncona back in 2012 and the business was founded by myself and the Wellcome Trust. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Wellcome Trust, but it's the world's second largest medical charity. Also has a very significant endowment and a long track record as an investor. And we set up Syncona to provide a deep long term pool of capital to set up innovative life science businesses based on basic research being done in Europe and particularly in the UK. And the model that we've undertaken is a found uh, build and fund model uh, in the sense that we go into institutions, typically uh, academic institutions, universities. We work alongside an academic founder and write a plan uh, for how we might take their technology off of the bench, bring it into the clinic and ultimately all the way through to approval. Uh, we then uh, fund that company and we put operational resource into that into that company to build it. Um, and we think that that model has a number of advantages, which is, first of all, you're getting in right at the ground floor. So this is a company building activity. It allows us to uh, get the best economics in terms of uh, the price at which we uh, invest in these businesses. But more importantly, it lets us work in partnership with those academics and it allows us to have a high level of control for the strategy in those businesses and a high level of operational input. Into the, rollout, into the rollout of those companies. The team at Syncona, uh, the core people in that team, all combine both deep technical backgrounds, so we have some PhDs, all from the life sciences, postdoctoral experience, but critically, they also have commercial experience. And I think one of the reasons for success of Syncona has been combining people who are both able to talk technically, but also have commercial experience. And that could be, for example, experience in launching medical products, in developing medical products, in founding companies and operating them, and in terms of uh, in terms of running clinical development uh, and getting products through that process, and it really is that process of taking a product off of the bench through to approval, which is the source of value creation, which has underpinned, I think, some of the success of Syncona over the last few years. So, so clearly, investors have liked what they've seen, and that that will be um, very much in terms of your. You know, in the companies that you invest in. What are those companies? What, what are the companies that they're liking? Well, so we only invest in life science companies, Lee. So we, we're involved in delivering medical products for significant unmet needs. And what we're looking to do here is not to, to, to address things that a little bit better. So, for example, taking a disease where there's maybe treated by uh, two or three pills a day and developing a pill that's once a day. We're typically going into diseases where there's completely no treatment available for these patients or where the existing treatment options are extremely poor and generally don't have good outcomes for these patients. And so I think uh, I think at the highest level, um, our shareholders are excited about that mission. Um, I think the other thing to call out is that really we're at a remarkable time in, in the field of medicine at the moment, the so-called age of personalized medicine. And that's really... Whereas historically, we didn't really treat patients on an individual basis. What we did was we said, you know, this patient has a disease in this organ and anybody who presents with a disease in that organ is all treated the same. Actually, now we really understand how to look at patients on a one by one basis and design therapies that are targeted to the molecular mechanisms that are driving their diseases. And that allows uh, better therapies to develop from an investment perspective. Uh, those trials tend to be smaller, the clinical trials, risks improved because you've got a higher probability of them working. And so that makes it attractive. I think from, a, from an investment perspective, it allows investors to move these drugs at higher probability of success. Of course, this is still a risk business and, 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 and we have to manage those risks, but it allows us to run those studies in a more focused way. When we then look at some of the companies in our portfolio, 
you'll see it's very enriched in, in, in a number of technologies. And I call out a couple of them, cell and gene therapy. And one of the big um, uh, developments of the last five to six years, and we've been really at the heart of it, has been the advent of gene therapy. But we absolutely are now at the era of gene therapy where products are being proved for diseases that were previously completely intractable. That then brings us to a couple of the companies to sort of highlight one of those is a gene therapy company. Uh, it was called uh, Nightstar Therapeutics. It's a business that we created out of the University of Oxford. Uh, we set it up. Uh, we took the lead program in choroideremia. We put some additional uh, programs into the company and then drove that through clinical development into the last stage of clinical development, which is called the phase three study. Uh, and at that point, we sold the business to Biogen, um, a top 10 uh, global pharmaceutical business. And we sold that business for $877 million, which represented a four and a half uh, X return on our investment. So that that really that's one of the standout sort of businesses of the past past few years then for you. And but you also target two to three new portfolio companies um, every year. So I just wonder how how has twenty twenty gone so far, and is 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 that sort of um, you know acquisition rate achievable now and in future? Yeah, a good question. I think you, you, you're spot on. We do two to three uh, new companies per year, and that really reflects the nature of our model. You know, we're not a business that's making essentially passive investments in a large number of companies. We're going in right at the ground floor to build the company from the foot up. That's central to our investment strategy. As you might imagine, that's a time intensive activity. Um, and that's why we typically do two to three companies per year. At the point at which we make the investment, typically we've been working on something for maybe nine, 12 months. We see hundreds of things per year, and really the investment process in the business is to triage rapidly down to that small number of things that we can that we can execute. Uh, we've closed two uh, investments uh, in 2020 so far. Um, give you a flavour of one of those is a company called Resolution. I think it's a great example of of the Syncona approach to company building. Uh, it's a spin out uh, backing an academic from. Uh, the Medical Research Council Centre for Regenerative Medicine in Edinburgh. Uh, he's called Stuart Forbes. Um, he's a liver doctor or hepatologist, and he works with patients both clinically, patients who are, are at the point of end-stage liver disease when their liver is going to fail and they need a transplant, but he also has a basic research group. We got to know Stuart really through our relationship with the Wellcome Trust, who I mentioned at the beginning, uh, co-founded the business uh, back in 2012. And the Wellcome Trust is really... Uh, the leading finance uh, 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 of basic science in the UK. And through that relationship, we got introduced to Stuart um, and maybe three years ago now, we became very excited about his work, uh, but we did not yet feel it was ready to create a company. And so one of the ways we manage those risks is to put small amounts of capital in, maybe to do some early seed experiments. And we put 1.4 million pounds into that business about two and a half, three years ago now, just to try and prove and de-risk a few technical aspects. That went extremely well. Um, and around a month ago now, we announced a 26.8 million pounds Series A investment uh, into that company called Resolution. And what they're doing actually is they're going to take a certain type of cell from the body, from the immune system. And of course, recognizing uh, the era in the COVID era, I think people are now very familiar with these cells of the immune system. Popular press, you're hearing lots about things like T cells. This is a different kind of immune cell. It's called a macrophage. And what we're using is to grow that cell outside the body of these patients and then to infuse it back into these patients where it tracks to the liver and it looks to clean up the liver of some of the damage that's been done to these livers. And the hope is that that will, if you like, rather rescue these patients from end stage liver failure. These patients, their livers are sort of damaged and on the brink. If we can put these cells in, they maybe can reinvigorate them and pull them back from the brink such that the patients uh, won't, need a, won't need a liver transplant. OK, well, I mean, life sciences, it's a very broad sort of sector description. Um, so what specific areas of the industry are you targeting currently? And is, is, that, is that consistent with industry trends? Good question. Um, I mentioned gene therapy. That's one area. The other area I mentioned was, was cell therapy. And we also invest in so-called biologic drugs and also traditional chemical drugs. But I'll just pick one of those areas. 
And it's another of those areas that I think is really exploding in terms of interest. And it's the use of engineered cells, typically immune cells. And there's really been a remarkable uh, progress over the last 10 years in terms of taking late stage cancer patients who would otherwise have died of their disease. Typically, as you know, patients, when they're diagnosed with cancer, they may have some surgery or some radiotherapy. If that doesn't work, they may then have some chemotherapy or some more targeted therapy. But unfortunately, a significant number of patients progress through all of those therapies and get to the end of the line when there's nothing more that can be done for them. Those patients traditionally will die of their disease. And what we're now seeing is some remarkable data in some of those diseases. And I think if we look forward over sort of 5, 10, 15 years, I think it will become increasingly common that in many cancers, uh, uh, cell therapy is being used uh, as a way of treating those tumors. And we will have moved from, if you like, the original chemical chemotherapeutic drugs through to the biologic drugs, which were sort of antibody drugs. You may have heard of uh, uh, an antibody drug called Herceptin. It's a drug that's used typically for breast cancer. If you like, the next extension of that will be to use these whole cells and to have them engineered outside the body to make them effective at targeting their cancers. And we've really built, I think, quite deep expertise in sites in Kona, both on cell therapy, gene therapy, uh, and they're two domains that I think have been behind some of the success of Synchona, largely because over the life of Synchona, we were very early to target those sectors and they've proven to have very high industry uh, industry focus.